All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the ninth annual Nichols College Elevator Speech Competition. My name is Hannah Vangel, and I will be acting as your master of ceremonies today. So a little bit about me. I am a senior psychology major here at Nichols College. And little shameless brag, I am the winner of last year's speech competition. So I can attest to the hard work and the preparation that goes into preparing and participating in this event. Um, I currently work as a behavioral therapist doing ABA care for children with autism, and I'll be attending graduate school in the fall for my master's in applied behavioral analysis. But enough about me. Let's introduce our judges for today's event. We're very lucky to have some wonderful judges with us here today. We have Jason Sweet, a Nichols Board of Advisors member since 2016, and he graduated with a BS in Business Admin from Nichols in 2004. Since then, he's worked with some of the world's largest SW providers, as well as working with startups where he's used the skills that he gained at Nichols College to wear many different hats within these organizations. Kristen Scarafoni, a Nichols Board of Advisor member since 2014. She currently works as Chief Human Resources Officer at KLR, which is one of the biggest accounting firms in New England. And she re received her MBA and MSOL from Nichols in 2006. Next up for our judges, we have EJ Landry taking on the position of co-chair of the Nichols College Board of Advisors. He received his undergraduate degree in accounting from Nichols, and he's been on the boards of U.S. Spine and Morgan Memorial Goodwill Industries since 2013. He currently lives in Franklin, New Hampshire with his wife, Christine, and is the proud father of three grown children. And of course, last but especially not least, our incredible president, Susan Enkelmeyer. She's the seventh president of Nichols College, and she's been a part of this competition since its conception, and she's been a huge encouragement to students and faculty alike. She holds a PhD in industrial management from Clemson University, an MBA from East California University, and a BA from Stevens College. Her research has been published in the Journal of Innovative Management, Quality Management Journal, and Quality Progress, and presented both nationally and internationally. And she's and she served as peer review team leader for the Association of Advanced College Collegiate Schools of Business, New England Association of Schools and Colleges, and she served on the board of directors for the National Association of Independent Colleges and Universities, as well as holding many other executive board member positions. Sorry, that was a mouthful. I would also like to take a moment to give some thanks. I would like to thank Fran and Don Carlo for their continued support of this competition, as well as Dan DeRoche, Professor Beaupre, and of course, Professor Westerling for her coordination of this event. So just a quick reminder to our audience and to our contestants out there, our rules for this competition include, time must be 60 seconds for each speech. We allow 10 seconds over or under, and speeches that will go over may have a point deduction and will be stopped. All contestants are allowed one redo of their speech. And this is a big one, so let's give a big round of applause for our participants for this. There are no notes allowed for these speeches. They must all be given extemporaneously. So our thousand dollar word of the day, no notes. And this event will be videotaped, so that way you can watch it in the future. And so all of our viewers right now can see it on YouTube. So for our audience, we also have some requests for you today. If you're on the Zoom call, please make sure to mute yourself. You can show your support with emoticons or by clapping. And just a big thanks to all of you for coming and supporting our students. So now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, without further ado, let's get into the competition. So first up, we have Alex Archibald. Thank you. When I was in the fifth grade, I became aware that my grandfather had colon cancer. I was frightened and scared of losing a close friend, but my mother continuously told me that everything would be okay. I doubted her and I questioned her. I asked, how do you know everything's gonna be okay? It was at that moment, she told me when she was 16 and again when she was 18, she herself had cancer. I was shocked, but at the same time, everything prior to this moment began to make sense. 
why she stumbled through the kitchen night in and night out, why her legs always hurt her after work, and why on long walks, we continuously had to take breaks. After that, I began to reflect on the memories I've made with my mother, and I began to realize I never once heard her complain or give up. She always gave 110% on everything she's done. It was then when I understood what she had been through when she was a kid, I was able to implement this into my own life, giving 110% on everything I do and never giving up. I figured if my mother could do it with everything she has been through, why couldn't I? Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. That was wonderful. Thank you for sharing all of that with us. You did a fabulous job. So now let's turn to our judges. Let's go ahead and see our scores from EJ and President Ankelmeyer. So it looks like a seven from EJ. Oh. And an eight. And an eight, perfect. So now let's go into some of the commentary. Let's hear from Jason Sweet first. Alex, great, great opening, man. Um, I'm gonna give you a, a commentary first and then I'll, I'll give you the score. Um, great cadence, like your articulation, the speed at which you delivered was, was fantastic. Your tone and the connection to the material, I sound like I'm on American Idol. Um, the connection to the material was, was fantastic. Um, the story, superb. Um, the the, the tough part about going, you know, first is obviously you have to, you know, kind of set the tone. Uh, you're setting a, a, a very, a very strong tone. Uh, I was pretty difficult last year, as Hannah may attest. I think that was a strong, a strong eight uh, on, on my side. So, so great job, Alex. Really appreciate it. All right. And next, let's hear from Kristen Scarfoni. Thank you, Alex. I think you did a great job as well. I think the story uh, was so emotional. It was very heartfelt. Uh, I, I felt like I was going to cry listening to you talk about your mom and your grandfather. So family is very, very important. And they clearly had an impact on you and how successful you are. I think it was great that you knew you were starting to go too fast and you took that deep breath and stopped yourself. Uh, the one caution, and as I do it, I speak with my hands a lot. So be very aware of what you're doing with your hands. Um, anytime you touch your face, it's, it can be a bit distracting, but I think you did a great job and I gave you a seven. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. All right. That was great. Thank you so much to all of our judges. Let's move on to our next contestant. Next, we have Crystal Nelson. Hello, I'm Crystal Nelson. I'm a freshman here at Nichols, majoring in marketing and minoring in hospitality. I am also on the softball team. Being a teammate on and off the field, I support, encourage, and lead by example to others. In high school, I got the privilege of being a multi-sport captain. In this role, I was a resource and role model to my peers, pushing them to be the best version of themselves they could be. I will always put forth maximum effort to get my job done effectively because I am determined to succeed in any role. As a member of both the Emerging Leaders Program and the National Society of Leadership and Success, academics are also extremely important to me. Last semester, I achieved a 4.0 GPA, earning myself a spot on the president's list. If you are in need of a determined, driven person, I hope you consider me as an option to complete your team. Again, my name is Crystal Nelson, and I believe that with me, we will succeed and grow together in new ways. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crystal. That was fabulous. So let's move into our judges. First, let's hear from your scores from Jason Sweet and Christine. So I see a seven from Christine and a six from Jason. So now let's get into some commentary. Why don't we hear from Susan first? Sure. Um, 
Crystal, you obviously had learned your speech. You didn't stumble at all through it. Um, I like some of the content, especially about succeed and growing together. My one suggestion for improvement is to provide a little more animation. You, you didn't smile much and you didn't make many gestures, which would have engaged the listener a little more. Uh, my score for you is a seven. Is that backwards? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Now let's hear from EJ. Uh, Crystal, nice job. Um, I agree with Susan. I, you knew the speech very well, which I think was excellent. Um, I, what I'd like to see is a little bit more conversational, like change in tone, um, a little stiff, sitting up straight, you know, move around just a little bit just to have a little bit more conversational, I think would, would be a little bit better for you. Uh, but overall, great job. And I'm going to give you a six. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Crystal. That was wonderful. Let's go on to our next contestant. Next, we have Shane O'Brien. All right. I want everybody to stop, go home tonight, and take a good look in the mirror and see what drives you, what makes you tick, what helps you think, what brings you to the next level. For me, I come from a long line of O'Briens. I originate from South Boston, Massachusetts, having my great grandfather, Noble O'Brien, paved the way for me and my family. I followed in his footsteps by becoming a member of Local 805, the Longshoremen's Union of Boston. With this job, I understand it comes with a great responsibility. As a fourth generation member, I understand to carry that family name and that family legacy each and every day is hard and it is very impossible in my eyes. But for me, I understand what I wanna be remembered as. That is an honest, a trustworthy, a courageous person. It was never easy growing up like this. It was never easy. I was afraid I was going to fail. I was afraid I, I feared what my parents and, and the people in my, my life would think of me. But now I look in the mirror and I look at my computer screen. I look on this Zoom call right now and I see a man that my great grandfather, Noble, and the people around me, my peers, respect and love. And thank you all. Thank you so much, Shane. All right, let's hear from our judges. First, we will get the scores from EJ and Suzanne. My score is an eight. As is mine. Perfect, thank you both. All right, and now we can hear some commentary from Christine. Hi, great job, Shane. I loved that you had so much enthusiasm about how this meant so much to you, being part of the family and the pride you have and that your family has and that you're looking at yourself. And, and one thing that we teach a lot is that emotional intelligence and being self-aware. And you really are. You know who you are. You know where you're going. You have a great sense of direction. Um, so I thought you did a great job and I gave you an eight. Thank you so much, Christine. Now let's hear from Jason. Awesome, Shane. Great, great job. Great opening, my man. That was way to catch and pull us in right out the gate. And then your tone, your cadence. I think EJ had mentioned, you know, uh, having kind of a conversational kind of attitude was 100% there, which just goes to show you that you were well prepared. Um, I, the, the one uh, bit of uh, constructive criticism that I, I will throw out there is it seemed like you were slightly uh, distracted. I don't know if there's uh, some, some roommates in the room or, or what, but uh, they, they caught your attention maybe once or, or twice. And that's, that's okay, because it just kept you on point anyway. Uh, so, you know, kudos, kudos there. Uh, I gave you a, a seven. Great job, man. Thank you so much, Jason. Fabulous job, Shane, thank you. All right, let's move on to our next contestant, Jameson DeFaria. Everybody comes to a point in their life when they want to quit, but it's at that moment that determines who they are. Quote by David Goggins. Perseverance is something that many leaders have, but it's not something people are born with. It's something that we learn. The summer leading up to my cross-country season senior year, I'd actually torn the labrum in my right side of my hip. 
And through a lot of pain and discomfort, I had a tough decision to make. I was either serve the role of captain for my team and showcase myself one final time to colleges, or I could sit out and rest. Ultimately, I decided that the goals of the team were more important. And through a lot of pain and through this obstacle, I overcame it to help the team succeed to finish top three in our conference. I also achieved all state qualifications and was also an all-star in certain meets. But when looking back on this, the most important thing is that I now understand perseverance. I'm confident that any role I serve, I can help the team succeed to the fullest because I understand what it means to overcome an obstacle. My name is Jamison DeFeria, and thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Jamison. That was great. All right, let's get into some scores from our judges. Let's first see the scores from Christine and Jason. So I see Jason has a six. Christine, would you mind just saying your score out loud for me? I'm so sorry. I'm having a little trouble finding you in the boxes. An eight. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. So let's get into some commentary. First, let's hear from EJ. Jameson, nice job. Um, you know, one thing I liked about yours is you started with a quote, and I knew exactly what you were, what you were talking about. Perseverance, teamwork, overcoming obstacles. Um, I thought that was excellent, and you kind of stayed with that same theme through the whole discussion. Um, I thought the voice was good and, you know, could have used a little bit more of the conversational thing that we were talking about earlier. But overall, I thought it was a very, very good job you did, uh, and I gave you an eight. Thank you so much, EJ. All right, let's go into Susan's comments. Jameson, I thought you did a great job. You seemed cool, calm, and collected. Um, if you were nervous, it didn't show at all. And I loved your the story that you were projecting about perseverance and teamwork. And um, it was a very thoughtful commentary. Thank you. And my score is an eight. Thank you so much. Right? Thank you, Jameson. Now we will move on to our next contestant, Jaron DeBolt. Hello, my name is Jaron DeBolt. And I know right now that probably means absolutely nothing to you, but let me tell you why it should. Since I was very young, my mother told me to always leave a place better than I found it. This is something I have done at every level of my life. Currently, I'm a freshman at Nichols College where I am studying general business with a focus in marketing and communications. Some of my passions in life revolve around social media, health, fitness, and helping others. I'm a hard worker, and since the age of 15, I have lived on my own and away from home. I'm originally from South Florida, but have lived all across the continent in pursuit of my two first passions, hockey and academics. As I progressed into my adult life, I am constantly looking for new opportunities to further myself and the team around me. I believe that at your company, I could bring a new level of energy and different perspectives that would leave your company better than before. Again, my name is Jaron DeBolt, and I would love to chat some more about the opportunity to work for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jaron. That was wonderful. All right, let's first hear some scores from EJ and Susan. My score is an eight. Thank you. Um, I am a seven. A seven, thank you. So now let's hear some commentary. Let's start with uh, Christine. Jaren, great job. I love that you were standing up. Um, so I am really impressed with somebody that can stand up and not move around. People, um, you will have the tendency when you're standing to be a little bit more um, aware of your space. So I thought that was great. Um, would like a little bit of more of a vocal pitch. You had a great story to tell. I would like to hear a little more enthusiasm if you get the, the, you know, the opportunity, but I thought you did a great job and I gave you a seven. Thank you so much, Christine. 
Now let's hear from Jason. All right, Jaron, uh, again, great, great opening, great close uh, is, is not just like the, the threads, you look good too, but the, the close of the, uh, the, the speech there was, was fantastic. Loved your message about continuous improvement um, and, and how you tied that all the way through from, from start to finish. Um, you know, as, as Christine mentioned, the fact that you were standing, I thought was, was great. Um, certainly differentiating thus far, and I think kind of presented a, a, a fairly strong executive presence, you know, so when you're pitching yourself, that is important to kind of command the camera uh, in this instance or command the room. So I gave you uh, an eight. Great job, man. Thank you so much, Jason. Great job, Jaron. All right, let's move on to our next contestant. Next up, we have Nicholas Gaitieri. We can't hear you, bud. I'll stop. We can hear you now. Sorry yeah. about that. Thank you. I never thought that losing $100 would be the thing that would help me regain my self-confidence. Growing up, I always feared trying new things, and this resulted in me always blindly following others. I finally learned my lesson when I started investing in the stock market. About a week in, I had already lost $100 by blindly following one of my friends, and I thought it was a complete waste of money. Turns out this was the best $100 I had ever spent. It helped me realize that I had to replace my fear of failure with self-confidence. I did this by following three rules. Number one, the obvious, stop blindly following others. Number two, prepare and research as much as possible for any given event. And number three, don't stress about the outcome. Because success doesn't come from always being right. It comes from not fearing failure. Many of us fail to realize that failure is part of success. If I had never lost those hundred dollars, I would not be here speaking in front of all of you here today. My name is Nick Walteri, and I no longer fear being wrong. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nick. All right, let's get some scores from Christine and Jason to start off with. I gave him an eight. Nick, I also gave you an eight. Great recovery, man. Thank you so much. All right, let's hear some commentary from Susan to start. Great job, Nick. Um, I really liked, I have three things and then you counted them out. One, two, three, that really brought my attention. And then your the uh, comment that failure is part of success. That is so true. I thought you did a great job. And even in the beginning with being muted and then unmuted, that had to be unnerving, but you started out great. I gave you a nine. Thank you so much. All right, let's hear from EJ. Nick, nice job. Um, I don't know how you pulled that off coming back from the, the start that you had. Typically I've seen people I uh, have that problem at the beginning and then they just freeze and it just kind of goes bad. You did a really great job of getting yourself composed and you, you went right into it. And I thought it was great. Um, I think, I think you explained it very well. The one thing I would say, if you're going into a speech talking about how you over, overcame something, you talk a little bit more about how you actually did it. Um, I, the message is right but I'd love to hear a little bit more personal, personalizing of it, but overall, great job. And I gave you an eight also. Thank you so much, EJ. And thank you, Nicholas, great job. All right, let's move on to our next contestant. We have Kyle Ettenhofer. When I was a young kid, I hated school. From kindergarten to first grade, I didn't want to wake up and go to school. And my parents knew this. Um, they, can I restart? Yep, you can restart. Right. When I was a young kid from kindergarten to first grade, I hated school. 
I hated waking up and going, and my parents knew this at a time when all my peers loved it. My parents had to make the strong decision to hold me back in first grade, and I felt like the idiot that was left behind while all my friends moved along. Looking back, this is one of the greatest decisions they have made for me, and I can't thank them enough. Now that I'm in college and I can make these big decisions for myself, I understand why they did it. And when I have a family of my own or a workplace, I hope that I can make these big decisions for others. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kyle. That was great. All right, let's get our scores from EJ and Susan to start with. My score is a seven. A six and a seven. Thank you both. All right, and let's hear some commentary from Jason to start. Uh, Jason, I believe I'm on mute. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Kyle. I, I love the the honesty of of your uh, entire pitch there. Um, I think it was it was spot on, and, and being somebody that uh, was was of similar um, motivation at the get go of my uh, educational career, um, I can I can really relate. Um, overall, I thought the the cadence was was good. Um, I liked how you were able to kind of recover uh, from the, the false start and get going again. So, so kudos there. Um, I would say, you know, if there was any constructive criticism, you know, just a, a little bit more um, uh, emotion into it. Right. Um, I, I, I felt the connection. I just felt like it could be a, a little bit better, but I thought good job overall. And I gave you a, a six. Thank you so much, Jason. So next, let's hear from Christine. Great, thank you. Kyle, I thought you also did a great job. I was glad that you restarted because you were saying um, a lot in the first three sentences. So you didn't do that as much when you continued. I think eye contact, very important. Uh, watch where you're looking. Um, sometimes I think when the camera's a little bit lower, you tend to look like you're looking at your keyboard and just one more of caution. Remember, you're still live and on camera. Even if you're on mute, we can read lips. So be careful. I gave you a seven. Thank you, Christine. And thank you, Kyle. So let's move on to our next contestant is Netanyahu Walton. When I was six years old, my father was killed in a war in, in Ethiopia. My mother ran away from the war. When I was in an orphanage, my feet, as I looked down my feet with no shoes, how can I survive this without my parents? As I lost hope, these two white angels came to rescue me as they took me to this beautiful country called America. Each and every day, I, day by day, I take and with sacrifices, I know I'll overcome these obstacles and thank you. Thank you so much. All right, to start off, let's get some scores from Christine and Jason. Six. Perfect. And I see a six from Jason as well. So now let's hear some commentary. Let's start with EJ first. Let me get myself off mute there. Um, what a great story. Um, you know, it's very personal. Honestly, when I when I talk about myself, I, I get kind of choked up and everything. I actually can't believe you don't get choked up in telling that story. Um, one thing I would say on on a little bit of improvement is kind of cadence, and that's like you know getting a rhythm of how you're speaking. And I think uh, I think just get get the feel feel of it, man. Just more of it, more of it, and you'll you'll get that. But um, nice job. Thank you. I'll give you a six. Thank you so much, EJ. Now let's hear some commentary from Susan. All righty. Uh, that was very brave. 
for you to talk about your personal story, because for most people, that's very, very difficult. And it's hard not to get emotional when you do that. Uh, it seemed a little choppy at times. And maybe that's just because you could have used more rehearsal or, or more run throughs with it. But again, you're a very brave person. And I, I admire you a lot for what you've gone through and what you're uh, trying to recover from. My score is a seven. Thank you so much. And thank you, Netanyahu, for sharing that with us. Thank you. Right. To move on to our next contestant, we have Courtney Winand. Communication is an important part of our lives, and we are so fortunate to be able to do so, especially during a pandemic. Now imagine a life void of communication, making connections, forming relationships, and receiving new opportunities, not having a voice to advocate for yourself, to be who you truly want to be. For the last 19 years, I've witnessed it firsthand with my brother, Paul. Remembering videos from when we were younger, a smile beaming off of his face ear to ear into our old video camera. One day, it all stopped. His smiles turned to frustration and the jokes turned to silence. The reason was an autism diagnosis. I've never had a conversation with my brother. He stopped talking before I could say my first words. But his life didn't end the day he stopped talking. It just had to begin in a new way. Our voice is one of our most powerful tools, one we often don't see as special or important. I've made it a point to never lose my voice because not only for me, I need it, but also my brother. Words aren't the only way to make our mark in this world. We have to show what we can do. And that I've learned through Paul. Different is not less. Thank you. Thank you so much, Courtney. That was wonderful. Right, to start off, let's see some scores from EJ and Susan. I see a nine from EJ. And a nine from Susan. Perfect. Thank you both so much. Right now, let's hear some commentary. Let's start off with Christine. That had to unmute. Um, so Courtney, great story. I love that you don't want to lose your voice and our voice is what we have. So I thought you did a phenomenal job. Cadence was really good. My favorite part really was the end where you brought it all together and you smiled. So you, it was almost like you relaxed. It's like, I got through this. So I thought you did a great job and I gave you a nine. Thank you so much, Christine. Let's hear from Jason. Awesome. Uh, Courtney, great, great story. Um, overall, you know, I felt like the, the, the cadence was a, a tad quick, but I think it, because you had such a robust message so i can i can appreciate that but if if you can uh maybe slow take a take a breath and and try to uh, enunciate specific parts that way you know it it, it hits in, in increments right um the 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 show it versus say it i loved that part of of the message that certainly the hit home and as um christine mentioned you know the power of you know one's voice uh, when speaking up is is super super important, especially as we kind of navigate these these trying times. So I gave you uh, an eight overall. Great job. Thank you, Jason, and thank you so much, Courtney. All right, moving on to our next contestant, we have Tara Ostromecki. Quit. Give up. Impossible. They said. I told everyone I was going to earn my degree in marketing in just three years, yet no one believed me. You're crazy if you think that's possible, someone once told me. Last year, I participated in this competition as a freshman, and this morning, I registered for the fall semester of my senior year. I turned the time given to me during the pandemic into the perfect time to further my academic career. I took as many summer classes as possible while still maintaining my summer marketing internship. Along with working towards my goal of graduating early, last year I started my own graphic design business in the midst of a pandemic, which I am proud to say I am still operating today. A year from now, I'll be getting ready to cross that stage in my cap and gown and begin the rest of my life pursuing my love for marketing and entrepreneurship. And yet those same words, quit, give up, impossible, that once brought me down came to be the components of my prosperity. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. All right, to start off, let's get some scores from Christine and Jason. 
Nine. Tara, you nailed it. Amazing. Great job. Fantastic. Perfect. Thank you so much. Don't quit. Don't give up. <laughs> Truly a wonderful message to share. All right, let's get into some commentary. Let's start off with Susan. Tara, I thought that was fantastic. You had a great voice inflection. You had terrific eye contact. And then the message was just remarkable as well. Um, I, I thought your pace was really good. It was a really nice presentation. My score is a nine. Thank you so much, Susan. Let's hear from EJ now. I wish I could add to this because, you know, what, what Susan just said is what, exactly what I was thinking. So I thought you did a terrific job. Uh, nice job. It was, you know, eye contact, the nonverbals, the, the way your voice worked uh, during it was great. And the story was just terrific. I'm giving you a nine. Perfect. Thank you so much, EJ. And thank you, Tara. All right, let's get on to our next contestant. Next, we have Haley Bogutz. Like many of you, I'm a class of 2020 graduate. We lost out on the highlight of our high school education. Senior year is supposed to be our last hurrah with our friends before we go our separate ways. We were robbed. My final semester was supposed to be easy classes with my closest friends. We were supposed to enjoy every moment and make memories to last a lifetime. But that didn't happen. Instead, I spent the remainder of my high school experience on Zoom call after Zoom call. We were robbed. As a girl, something I looked forward to most was my senior prom. And my dress chosen and paid for and my date at everything a high school senior could ever want. But then again, we were robbed. Through all these obstacles, my friends and I never gave up. My small school afforded me opportunity to have a graduation, but it still wasn't the same. From one 2020 graduate to many others, it is fair to say we were robbed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Haley. All right, to start off, let's see some scores from EJ and Susan. My score is a seven. And a six. Thank you both. All right, now let's get into some commentary. Let's start off with Jason. All right, Haley, um, a ton of personality in the delivery of your, your pitch, which I thought was, was great. You had a, a good cadence along, um, almost as if you were kind of talking with your, your girlfriends about your, your experiences. Um, the one thing as far as constructive criticism, I would, you know, say, and I think could just be, you know, feedback in, in general is if the, 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 the primary focal point of that speech was that you were robbed, I would have loved to hear kind of the, the silver lining that, you know, there is nowhere to go other than up, right. The experiences are only going to, to get better. And, um, you know, I think that would have, you know, uh, certainly helped with uh, the, the scores, kind of tying it to, you know, uh, a better uh, a better outcome potentially. But I gave you uh, overall, it was a, a strong seven. Good job. Thank you so much, Jason. Let's move on to Christine. Kaylee, I also think that you had um, a good story to tell. I think you had a lot of enthusiasm, but I agree with Jason. Um, negativity can be a little tough if there's not that upswing. So I would love to have heard how you turned it around and you're in college and how you're, you know, being yeah. successful. So turn that negative into that positive and you have a great, great story to tell. So I also give you a seven. Great. Thank you so much, Christine. And thank you, Haley. All right, let's go move on to our next contestant. We have Olivia Antonson. Hi, my name is Olivia Antonson and I love my comfort zone. It's safe, it's secure, it's easy. However, I came to the realization that my comfort zone was stopping me from growing, stopping me from reaching my full potential. I didn't come to college to stay in my comfort zone. I came to college to take risks and to challenge myself. I came to college to 
take advantage of opportunities and to grow as a person. The minute I stepped out of my comfort zone is the minute I started growing and I haven't looked back since. But how did I do it? I started saying yes to opportunities that scared me. Yes to opportunities that pushed me out of my comfort zone, like presenting my research at an academic conference, competing at an international model UN conference and giving this speech today. I loved my comfort zone, but I knew what I needed to do. I needed to leave fear behind, the fear of change, fear of new and unfamiliar experiences. I'm done playing it safe. I'm done taking it easy. My name is Olivia Antonson, and I am no longer letting my comfort zone hold me back. Thank you so much, Olivia. All right, first let's get the some scores from our judges. Let's start off with Christine and Jason. So I, I see gave her a 10. Perfect. Olivia, nice. great job. Awesome job. Great. That was wonderful. All right, let's hear some commentary. Let's start off with EJ. If I wasn't retired, I'd want to hire you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sitting here going, if I was sitting across from you at, at the table, I'd say this, this person's going to get the job. You did a terrific job. Everything about it, you know, standing up, the, the cadence, the, the voice, the story, everything. Really good. Thank you so much, EJ. Let's hear from Susan. Olivia, that was a drop the mic moment. It absolutely was. Boom. Um, eye contact, you smiled, great pace, you used your hands appropriately. I just think it was awesome. A 10. Perfect. Thank you so much, Susan. And thank you, Olivia. That was wonderful. All right. Moving on to our next contestant, we have Madison Sudan. Ma I'm so sorry, Madeline Sudan. That's perfectly fine. Every interview that I've ever been in has started the exact same way with the question, tell me a little bit about yourself. For a while, I took the Captain America, I'm just a kid from Brooklyn approach. I told them, I'm just a kid from the Berkshires. And I explained what that meant, what it was like growing up in a tourist town. But lately I've been re-examining my life, my purpose, my place in the world. I thought, what's the best thing about me? And I realized this. I am a Swiss army knife, adaptable, flexible, resilient, and I am not this way by nature, but by instinct. I grew up as one of the only queer kids in a small conservative town, and I did a lot of extracurriculars. I'm talking sports, band, chorus, theater, tri-varsity athlete, honor roll, and not everyone that I interacted with in these spaces was willing to accept me, but I got through it. I can communicate and relate with almost anyone on the planet. And I'm going to be honest, it took me a while to accept myself, but how you love yourself is how you teach others to love you. Thank you so much, Madeline. That was wonderful. All right, let's hear some scores from our judges. Let's see some scores from EJ and Susan to start. Mine is a nine. Fine for me. Thank you both so much. Now let's hear some commentary. Let's start with Christine. So Madeline, phenomenal job. I think you, your cadence was great. I think your enthusiasm, your vocal variety and pitch, awesome. You have a wonderful story to tell. And I know about the Berkshire, so it was relatable to me. Um, so again, Fantastic job. I would say one, one little thing that I could say is um, the body language is great other than the little bit too much of the moving, but using your hands, you know, put it, pointing out the numbers. That was great. So I gave you a nine. Thank you, Christine. Let's hear from Jason next. You guys are making this very difficult for us to score. <laughs> uh, Matt, that was that was uh, fantastic. Um, you know, Christine mentioned the, the the tone, the cadence. It was up and down. It had us, you know, drawn in the entire time. 
Uh, as, as someone who also is self-described as a Swiss army knife, I, I very much related. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't mind the swaying uh, and, and the counting and things like that. That just kind of showed me how much you were into what you were presenting, which made it that much more believable. Um, I thought that was fantastic. And again, this is kind of where we get, all get into our own little kind of personal, you know, points of view. But, you know, I, I, I would hire you, you know, as to EJ, you know, hiring uh, Olivia. I thought that was fantastic. Kudos. Thank you so much, Jason. Wonderful job, Madeline. Um, all right. Next, we have Jamarin Eli. Good evening. So I'm Eli Jamron. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Everyone loves New York. So if I were to describe myself in one word, it would be that I'm a pit bull. So I saw uh, your manage managing position was open and I wanted to take that opportunity. So for work, I, work at, I worked at Vector Marketing uh, for at least three months. And when I was there, I became the top sales rep within three months. And I sold $10,000 worth of knives in 10 months. And that just says something about me. The reason why I'm talking to you today is because I'm getting out of my comfort zone. And that's what it's about, getting out of your comfort zone and not letting you know anyone tell you different. And I can't wait to be a part of your family-oriented environment. And the best way, to, and I hope I, I'm, you know, you consider me for your position. And that's it. Thank you so much. All right, let's move into um, seeing some scores from our first judges. Let's see some scores from Christine and Jason. Maybe a six, Eli. Good job, bud. Right, two sixes. Now let's hear some commentary. Let's start with Susan. All right, a pit bull, huh? Well, that's interesting. Um, I think you did a good job. It was um, a good story. Uh, you might want to think about eye contact. I know it's hard on Zoom, but you were seem to be looking anywhere but straight into the camera. And then just be a little cautious about your nonverbals, a lot of the arm yeah. crossing and all that. It's good for effect now and then, but it happened quite a bit. So my score is a six. Thank you so much, Susan. Now let's hear from EJ. So um, I liked the start of the story. I didn't think it finished all that great uh, at the end, but it was a very good start. I agree, agree with the body language, um, you know, if you're ever in the business world and someone's sitting in the room crossing their arms, you really know that they're either not interested or not really listening to you or um, whatever it might be, but just be careful about that type of body language. Um, but overall, good job. I gave you a six. Thank you, EJ. Right, moving on to our next contestant, we have Sam Waltzman. It is what it is, a phrase we hear a lot these days. But is it? I'm not the kind of person who doesn't look at what something is, but what something can be. During my first semester of freshman year, I took college writing with Mr. LaJoy, and I thought, oh boy, here we go, another writing class. I felt this way until he assigned Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. When we came to class that day, he asked, what type of barbecue sauce did they use at the end of the story? Those who hadn't read were frantically flipping through the pages trying to find the answer, while the few of us who had read were laughing. I remember Mr. LaJoy said that if we did the work, we would have a great time, but if we didn't, we would be miserable. Boy, was he right. I learned that finding the positive thing in things, the good, helps me with helps me engage my, can I restart real quick? Sorry. Absolutely, go ahead and restart. Not a problem. It is what it is, a phrase we hear a lot these days, but is it? I'm now the kind of person who doesn't look at what something is, but what something can be. During my first semester of freshman year, I took college writing with Mr. LaJoy, and I thought, oh boy, here we go, another writing class. 
I felt this way until he assigned Shirley Jackson to the lottery. When we came to class that day, he asked, what type of barbecue sauce did they use at the end of the story? Those that hadn't read were frantically flipping through the pages, trying to find the answer. While a few that had read were laughing. I remember Mr. LaJoy said that if we did the work, we would have a great time. But if we didn't, we would be miserable. And boy, was he right. I learned that finding the good in things, the positives, helps me to engage fully in tasks and to change my perspective on them. So now when I'm faced with a task or a situation that I feel that I don't like or I feel is, is pointless, I just change the way I think about it. Whether it be stuck in traffic or not wanting to write a paper, I always reframe the way I think about things. With me, it's not what it is, it's what it can be. Thank you so much, Sam. All right, let's see some scores from our judges. To start off, let's see EJ and Susan. A score is an eight. Seven. A seven from EJ, perfect. All right, let's get into some commentary. Why don't we start with Christine? I thought you did a great job, a great recovery. It's hard when you have to restart and you were able to take that breath, move forward. You had a great cadence, great vocal um, pitch. So I think it's okay to take a breath, but I love that you had a positive message to send to us. So I gave you an eight. Thank All you right, so much. Well, oh, sorry. Uh, I, I thought overall, uh, as, as Christine mentioned, great, great message, you know, do the work is ultimately what it boils down to. You'll never have a, uh, a negative result when you put the effort, you know, forth, right? Uh, I loved your, your story as the vehicle to, to deliver that message about, you know, your college writing professor. Um, I love the message about having, you know, a uh, kind of a growth mindset and the ability to kind of seek a different point of view. Um, I, I mentioned kind of in our, our early, you know, entry point of, of uh, getting ready for the, the pitch contest that we don't know where you're going with your pitch. Um, and, and that's, that's okay. So if, if you fumble, um, you know, it's, it's not an, an issue because again, we don't know, you know, if you're just taking a prolonged breath or, or what. Um, but as Christine mentioned, I thought overall it was a great recovery. Um, the second go around, I felt you like you were a little bit fast uh in in your delivery whereas the first time it was much more you know personable and, and believable um but i think I, you were again trying to condense everything overall i thought it was a a great job sam i gave you a, a seven thank you so much jason and thank you sam all right moving on to our next contestant we have max noonham Hello, and thank you all for letting me speak to you today. My name is Max Noonan, and I'm a freshman at Nichols College and will be graduating with a general business degree and a minor in communication. I'm also a member of the men's ice hockey team. My journey has been nothing but normal. Since the age of 14, I have lived away from home to pursue my goal of playing college hockey. Doing so, I lived in four different states and two countries, and this year I accomplished that goal. Just like I accomplished that goal, I will accomplish goals within your business. Living away from home turned me into the man I am today and has given me lifelong experiences and lessons that I can bring to your company. I am goal-oriented, organized, confident, and talented. If you hire me, you will see that I make an immediate impact and help increase success and productivity of those around me. I believe I would be a great asset to you and your team, and I hope we can continue this conversation one day soon. Again, my name is Max Noonan, and thank you for letting me speak to you briefly, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much, Max. All right, to start off, let's see some scores from Christine and Jason. Seven. It looks like Jason is also giving a seven. Thank you both so much. All right, now let's get into some commentary. Let's hear from EJ. All right. Um, Good job. One thing that was interesting about you, I can't tell if you're standing or sitting, um, which which actually is a positive because if you're standing great and if you're sitting, you're you've got very good posture um, and it, it looked like you were very attentive uh, to us. Um, I 
I liked I liked the story. Um, I, I mentioned this, I think, earlier that I, I I'd like to hear why you you would do something for me. Um, like, what would you do that would I I would hire you for? But you will get something from me is something. But why? How have you done it before? Put a little bit more personal personal story uh, into why is what I was looking for. But I think it. Would, but I thought it was very good. Uh, I gave you an eight. Perfect. Thank you, EJ. Now let's hear from Susan. Okay, Max, nice job. Um, uh, to echo what EJ said, I think some of it would be just to connect the dots. I mean, you've obviously lived a lot of places and you had a huge goal. Now, how does that translate into what you can do for one of these companies? But I thought your pace was good. Eye contact was good. You seem calm and collected. An eight for me. Thank you so much, Susan, and thank you, Max. All right, moving on to our next contestant, we have Cameron Ducharme. In freshman year of high school, I'd given up. I was failing almost all of my classes when told by most of my counselors that it would be hard for me to graduate. I was adamant on not doing schoolwork, and I, even so, I gave up sports, which I love to play. This is when I went, meant my, oh, can I please restart? Yes, of course, go ahead. In freshman year of high school, I had given up. I was failing most of my classes and was told by my counselor that it would be hard for me to graduate. I was very adamant on not doing my schoolwork that I'd even given up sports, which I love to play. This is when I met my teacher and my mentor, Mr. Santoro. He sat me down one day after school and told me his backstory. As a child, he was a juvenile and got kicked out of multiple schools. He shared with me how he became from nothing to a police officer and even became a teacher. He retired from the police force and became, his, uh, became a teacher. During this, he broke his back powerlifting, and the doctor told him he'd never be able to walk again. And he said no. He did not give up. He wanted to prove him wrong, and he did. He was standing and walking in front of me. If a man can come back from being told he'd never be able to walk again, then I can do anything, like graduate high school. And that is what I did. He's the reason I am where I am today, and that's why I never give up. Thank you so much, Cameron. What a wonderful message. All right, to start off, let's get some scores from some of our judges. First, let's see some scores from EJ and Susan. Minus a seven. All right, so that is a six and a seven. Next, let's move on to some commentary. So first, let's hear from Christine. So Cameron, I think it's a great story and you were able to show us how having a mentor can be so meaningful no matter what age we are. So even as a freshman in high school, that mentor helped you see that there was more to life in how you could grow. So I think that was wonderful. Uh, one, you know, one word of advice I could give you is probably just slow down a little bit. I know that this is very nerve wracking, but when you first take your deep breath, then just start speaking, but do it at a slower pace and a little bit more of a vocal pitch. So I gave you a seven. Thank you Cameron. so much, Christine. Now let's hear from Jason. Cameron, I gave you a strong seven, bud. Um, we both took a deep breath at the start. Um, I, I can, I can, I could see and, and feel a, a little bit of your nerves um, and that's, that's okay. From a posture standpoint, you can see that I also lean in. Um, so I, I appreciated that. Uh, to Christine's point about um, how quickly you delivered the uh, your, your speech, it was it was a, a tad fast. Um, I think if you had you know taken uh, uh, maybe a, a breath in between you know each kind of uh, parts of the story, uh, it would have been a, a little bit better, and I think we would have scored uh, scored higher. Um, but overall, you know, great message. And I thought it was a, a good delivery. So uh, again, I gave you a, a seven. Thank you, Jason. And thank you so much, Cameron. All right, moving on to our next contestant, we have Jordan Knowles. How many times have you questioned your direction in life? Every action you make can dictate your future. Every person you make smile, every battle you get through, and every opportunity you take. Throughout my day-to-day -day life, I like to display as much uh, compassion, stability, and the urge to push forward as I can. 
When somebody comes to me with a problem, I like to see it from all sides, taking everyone's feelings into consideration. Compassion is the foundation of humanity, and you never know who you'll save by showing it every day. Stability is one of my prime traits. When you need me, I'm there. But having someone that is stable in your life can provide comfort, and that is all I want to be to someone. And finally, the urge to push forward. With cancer consuming my father's life, it has greatly affected me and my family. It has taught me that even though life doesn't go to plan, life still goes on. I've learned to push forward the hard way, and it has shaped me into the young woman I am today. I will always be compassionate. I will always be somebody's crutch, and I will always push through the battles life throws at me. And with these traits under my belt, I will never lose my direction in life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jordan. All right, let's start by hearing by getting some scores from Christine and Jason. So I see a seven from Christine. And uh, I went with an eight. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jason. Great All time. right. Now let's get some commentary. Commentary. Let's start with Susan. All right. Uh, nice job, Jordan. I like the way you started out with the three things and you summarized them again at the end. You seem just a little nervous, which this is intimidating, this environment, but I thought you did a really good job overall. And my score is an eight. Thank you so much, Susan. All right, now let's hear from EJ. Oh, um, EJ, you're muted. Well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Yeah. Um. So anyways, I, I thought you did good. As, I as you were speaking, I was writing down a comment. Give me examples. Give me examples of what you did. Um, you, you told me all the traits you had and all of that. And then all of a sudden, then you came to the cancer discussion. And that kind of like closed that loop just a little bit. But I think I, I want a little bit more of that. Um, because when I'm, I'm talking to a person like you um, to talk about what's your differentiator and I, I hear the traits but I really want to hear the stories as to why you did something that was made a difference to either somebody else or the person that you're talking to uh, so that's what I'm looking for I gave you a seven nice job perfect thank you so much EJ and thank you Jordan for sharing with us all right next up is Xavier Powell I had sweat dripping to my face and my shoelaces were untied. I was furious. I just lost my third match for wrestling and I didn't know what to do with myself. I lost the passion for my sport and this was the biggest um, challenge I faced senior year. For, for wrestling, it was a love or hate relationship. I loved it because the thought of winning and when the referees had my hand up, I was unstoppable. When I lost, it was, it was the worst feeling in the world. I lost my passion because of senioritis and I only went to practice once a week. During the last tournament of the regular season, my coach came up to me and said, why are you here? The question of why are you here really brought my attention. Why am I here? The reason why I'm here is to finish up my senior year of the past four years of all the hard work and dedication I brought to the sport. From that point on, I want to do everything in life, no matter what it is, if it's brushing my teeth or going for a walk, I want to do my 110%. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's start by getting some scores from our judges. Let's see some scores from EJ and Susan. Mine is a seven. Six. Thank you both so much. All right, now let's hear some commentary. Let's start with Jason. All right, Xavier. Um, I could hear the the passion that you had for uh, for wrestling, and you know it was it was clear. You know what you learned from your your coach there. You know why are you here? It was a great kind of you know tagline to you know really in, in anything that you approach, right? Um, I thought the uh, your. I don't know if there was something going on in, in front of you. It seems like there was a little bit of a, a distraction potentially there. Um, would be, you know, probably my only constructive criticism, uh, maybe a couple of other uh, additional run throughs uh, is as well. But I thought the, the cadence was was good. I thought the message was good. I gave you a, a seven. 
Thank you so much, Jason. Now let's hear from Christine. I agree with Jason. I thought the cadence was, was good. I think that you had a good story to tell. Why you were here is such a, a great um, statement or a great question that a, a coach can ask. Uh, one thing that I could say, if you could approve upon is just being a little bit more articulate or a little bit more clear when you're speaking, because you're, when you're rushing, then it, you start to lose some of the words. Um, so I gave you a seven. Thank you so much, Christine. And thank you, Xavier. All right. To move on to our next contestant, we have Dominic Savastano. Thank you. Just spit it out. Come on, buddy, just say it. These words would seem like pretty horrible things to tell someone that has a stutter, but it turns out they'd be the most motivating things I'd ever hear in my life. A man once said, life was 10% things that happened to you and 90% how you respond to them. I realized that I was too focused on things that I couldn't control. I, these things hurt me because I couldn't control it. But what I could control is how it made me feel and how I would respond to it. If you were to tell me five years ago that I would be going out of my way right now to publicly speak, I would call you crazy. But here I am. I learned in life that it's not about how many times you fall down, but about how many times you can get back up. And this is what I've been living by almost my whole life. My name is Dominic Tavistano, and although public speaking is not my strongest suit, facing adversity definitely is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dominic. To start off, let's see some scores from Christine and Jason. So I see- I gave him an eight. Great story. Dominic, I love the story. I love the delivery. It was, oh, sorry, I'll leave the commentary, but good job, man. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christine and Jason. All right, for some commentary, let's hear from EJ. Well, I love the story of perseverance, and I don't think you said it in the in your comments, but courage. Um, I know this is going to be really tough so um, to do this, but more and more practice, and you can tell that you're getting the practice and you're doing a great job of it. So I gave you a nine. Thank you so much, EJ. Let's hear from Susan next. Brave story. Uh, that was really awesome, Dominic. And uh, kudos to you for overcoming what's been a challenge for you and talking about 90% of life is how you respond to things. And that is so true. My score is a nine. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dominic. That was wonderful. All right. Next up, we have Jenna Condon. Asked for students to stay after school and help her clean her classroom to get it ready for summer vacation. And I raised my hand to help. Seeing the classroom all set up and ready to go for the incoming second graders made me feel a sense of reward that inspired my confidence to put in the extra effort to improve my school and community. I worked with my peers to plan and execute a clothing drive at my school, partnering with Project 351 in Cradles to Crayons. Later, I raised my hand again as president of my school's National Honor Society chapter, where we worked to find ways to benefit our community through volunteerism. From second grade to now, I am driven to find ways to contribute and be a part of something bigger than myself. My name is Jenna Condon, and when someone needs help, I raise my hand. Thank you, Jenna. All right, to start off, let's see some scores from EJ and Susan. Seven from Susan. Thank you both so much. All right, now let's hear some commentary. Let's start off with Christine. So I thought you did a great job. You have a good story. Um, I like to see when people are volunteering without being asked. Um, pointers that I could give you is I felt like you were almost reading from something on the other side of the screen, you know, and it is difficult when we're on zoom. So you're trying to look at and make eye contact, but you did keep looking away. So just be mindful of that. And I gave you an eight. Thank you, Christine. All right. Let's hear from Jason. Yeah, Jenna, I, I would agree with Christine. Um, the uh, you were 
I felt very rehearsed, but there's a difference between rehearsed and, and like a believable delivery, right? So if there's any way for you to inject, um, you know, a little bit more or energy way that maybe that's, you know, with, with hand movements, uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I love the message of, of raising your hand. Uh, you'd be surprised at, you know, what you can accomplish just by volunteering. Uh, and you know the, um, the the benefits of of that, not just personally for you, but also for uh, others uh, others around you. I gave you a strong eight. Great job, Jenna. Thank you so much, Jason, and thank you, Jenna. All right, next up we have Victoria Palkin. Happy birthday, Jerry. Jerry is one of my residents at the nursing home that I've been working at for the past two years. I consider all of my residents like family and Jerry is like a grandfather, a mentor, and especially a best friend to me. He has taught me patience. He's taught me selflessness. He's taught me how to give back to the greater good and especially how to be grateful for the little things in life. Jerry loves Jello, and this one time when I gave him his Jello, the smile on this man's face was priceless and precious and could genuinely melt the coldest of hearts. Jerry is the librarian. He runs bingo three times a week. He talks to me about his time served in the military, and he tells me about the other residents as well. And he teaches the residents about his travels abroad. Jerry once told me that he doesn't miss being younger per se, but he does miss being able to learn new things every single day. So now I say it's my mission to teach him and to tell him all the little things that I learned from all of my classes. Jerry gives me life advice, relationship advice, pet advice, and especially car advice. All of my residents have made such a profound impact on my life, and I sincerely hope that each one of you has a person like Jerry in your life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Victoria. All right, to start, let's see some scores from Christine and Jason. Eight. Victoria, I gave you a six. Good job. You're lucky to have Jerry. <laughs> Thank you both so much. All right, now let's hear some commentary from Susan. All right, you were incredibly animated. That was very good. Lots of smiling and uh, I liked your story. It was a personalized story. So I do appreciate that. And I'm gonna give you a nine for all your animation and, and hand movements and that, that were very good. Thank you, Susan. All right, let's hear from EJ next. So I talked about conversational at the beginning of this whole night, and you definitely have the conversational down. Um, you, you had the good story. Um, you had the hands going a lot, um, and maybe just a little bit too much. But honestly, I liked it because it kind of uh, kept it going. It, it, it showed how into this whole Jerry story you are, which is great. Um, so overall, I thought you did a very good job. Um, I gave you a, a seven. Thank you so much, EJ, and thank you, Victoria. All right, and our last contestant of the evening is Miran Yusufi. My grandfather was one of the most amazing and hardworking people I've ever met in my life. This was because of his huge heart and tremendous willpower. I remember when I was about nine years old and I came home from a hot summer day, and all I did was just see him work by himself building our stone wall. This to me showed me how hardworking he was because at this time he was 60 years old. My grandfather was one of the main reasons why I am the person I am today. That's why waking up to the news of his passing was heartbreaking. My grandfather was my mentor, the person I looked up to and the person that made me strive to be the best person I am. But this experience made me realize that in every situation, there is a positive to it. The positive was I had to learn how to be courageous and brave. My grandfather was one of the most amazing people and he always taught me to push. And him saying push, push, push always made me learn to be a better person in the future. And for that, I thank you for listening to the story about how my grandfather made me who I am. 
Thank you so much. To start, let's see some scores from EJ and Susan. Six. A six. Thank you both. All right, and now let's hear some commentary from Christine. So again, great story. I love mentors, especially mentors that are family and you have the ability to, to look up to them. And he obviously had a profound impact on your life. Um, some feedback, uh, look at the camera, make eye contact. I can tell because I just saw somebody walk behind you that you have somebody else in the room. So it might be a little bit distracting. So it would have been nice to have you, you know, not in that room if that would have been possible. And also slow it down a little bit and try to change your vocal pitch. I wanted to hear a little bit more emotion about your grandfather. It was there, but I wanted to see it and feel it a little more. So I did give you a seven. Thank you so much, Christine. Now let's hear from Jason. Uh, Jason, you're muted. Yep, <laughs> two strikes. Maron, I thought it was a, a, a great story. And as, as someone who uh, had a, a very close relationship with, with my grandfather as, you know, a, a strong role model, you know, who also worked, uh, you know, in uh, hard labor, building walls and uh, as a, a mechanic, um, I, I really connected with that. I would have loved, as, as Christine mentioned, if you were better able to relay that personal collect connection, right? Um, you know, that was probably the, the, the biggest piece for, for me. Um, you have a couple of more years left. Please come back next year, do this again. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, you know, maybe run through, you know, uh, two or three more times uh, in preparation for this. Uh, and, and as Christine mentioned, you know, try to maybe isolate a, a little bit. Um, and, and deliver that with, you know, as much emotion as you possibly can. I gave you a, a seven. Great job. Thank you so much, Jason. And thank you, Miran. All right. So it looks like those are all of our speeches for today. They were incredible. So a big pat on the back to all of our contestants for the day. I know it's very difficult to get out there and put yourself out there, but you all did a phenomenal job. So now that we've heard from the herd, it's the only corny joke that I decided to include today. You're all welcome. We're going to give the judges some time to deliberate. So they're going to go into a breakout room and they will be back momentarily. My kids would have called that a dad joke. 100%, hence the kudos. <laughs> that was the one that I was like, I need to include. It's just too good. So thank you all for bearing with me with that. <laughs> So while our judges do some deliberation, I would love to go around the room, the room and sort of talk to some of our contestants. I would love to hear from you guys um, just a little bit about why you decided to join the speech competition this year. Um, is there a specific thing that kind of inspired you to join? Is it something that you've been wanting to do that maybe you didn't decide to do until this year? So I'd love to hear a little bit about that. So I'm gonna kind of just go around or if anyone would like to volunteer themselves to say anything. I can go first. Perfect, thank you, Victoria. Go right ahead. Well, my professors encouraged me and I spoke to Professor Temple and to Professor Westerling. And especially when I went to work, I told Jerry and I told my residents when they were all sitting around and I said, I'm going to do this elevator speech. And I said, Jerry, I'm going to do it about you. And he said, oh no, well, you have to include all the other residents as well. I was like, Jerry, I have 60 seconds, but I'll try my best. And today is his birthday and I got him this picture frame and I got him vanilla tea because he's been asking about it. So when I go to work on Wednesday, I'll be sure to tell him all about it. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing. I will say when I participated as well, it was a lot of faculty pushing, but pushing in a very nice way. And I hope that Jerry thought that this was a nice birthday gift for him because it very much was. So you'll definitely have to show him the video of you performing. Thank you, Anna. Is there anyone else who would like to go next or? All right. Why don't we hear from, 
How about is Sam on? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm right here. So what inspired you to join this competition this year? Uh, well, we uh, we did this for effective speaking like last week. I did well in class. I got a good grade. I was proud of it. And my teacher was like, yeah, you should, you should enter. You might win. And I was like, okay, I'll enter. So I entered and here we are. That's great. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So entering yeah. is definitely the best way to get your foot in the running for winning. So thank you so much for joining us today and for answering that question for me. I know I put you on the spot a little bit. No problem. No problem. Would anyone else like to volunteer? Because I can pick two. All right. I can go. So Thank you so much, Dominic. All right. I just want to say, um, well, I was kind of inclined to join because I also have um, Professor Temple as a teacher, and she kind of uh, brought it up and thought that it was a good idea. And um, I've always been shy for public speaking just because I've always been afraid I was going to like freeze in public and just embarrass myself. But I know the, the best way to, to improve on that is to just literally like force myself to do it. So I'm like, uh, and it, this is a good place to start because I know uh, this is one of hundreds of speeches I'll have to give out in my life. So I figured this would be a great way to start off my career with public speaking. That's so true, Dominic. And I love that sentiment of, you know, you're only going to get better with practice. And it's so true. So I'm glad that you saw this as a wonderful opportunity to practice. You did a phenomenal job. And I thank you so much for answering my question and for participating today. Does anyone else want to volunteer? I can go. Thank you so much, Olivia. What inspired you to join this competition? Yeah, so I've been trying to go outside of my comfort zone a little more and I had to sit back and ask myself, does this competition scare me? Yes. Is it out of my comfort zone? Yes. So I'll sign up. And that's why I decided to do it. I love that. And I love that you kind of made that like a mini extension of your elevator speech because it just goes along so perfectly with your pitch. But that's so true. So I, there really are a lot of things in life that just because they're scary, that's probably why we should do them. So I love that sentiment. Thank you so much, Olivia. Anyone else like to share why they joined the competition today? How about Jameson, what inspired you to join the competition today? So pretty much the, you know, after the first semester of college, I just wanted to really start trying new things. Being in high school, I was just a student athlete. I really just took academics and athletics seriously. But I decided, you know, the best way to continue my career, my life would be to try new things. So I thought the elevator speech competition would be, you know, another great experience that I could do. So. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. And I think that I am a little biased, but I do think that that's one of the things that Nichols College does a wonderful job at. You know, they really do inspire students to reach out of their comfort zone. So I thank you so much for doing that and for being here with us today. So I am being summoned to the breakout room. I will be back momentarily to give everybody the results of today's competition. So please bear with me for a moment and I'll be right back. Hi everyone. I want to give a big congratulations to all of you. This, it, it was fantastic and I was a nervous wreck for all of you. Uh, and you all did a fantastic job and I hope you're all proud of yourself. Um, I'm going to be sending a note to all of you tomorrow with some suggested verbiage for your resumes and I sincerely hope you add this to your resume. Um, when I, I'm teaching junior PDS right now, and I have a few students who have entered the competition previously, and they've gone on some job interviews, and they said, this always drives a conversation, because people will say, you entered an elevator speech competition? Like, people know, and, and they say, wow, that takes, it speaks to your character, that you're willing to get outside of your comfort zone um, and take that risk. So I, I applaud all of you. I hope you found it a worthwhile uh, experience. We're going to wait. The judges are going, going to come back. Uh, they have a few comments to share. Um, Professor Temple, I see you're here tonight. Thank you for coming. Do you have any words of wisdom you'd like to share with them? 
Yes, um, I, I always club this as the most important part of that class because it's like an evolving resume and it evolves with your experiences, your perspectives and everything changes as you get older and have new experiences. And I'm, I had 11 people from my classes and they're all first year students and I'm really proud of their bravery. I've also known uh, many of the other people who were here, uh, Victoria, whom I missed out on. Sorry, Victoria, I'll send an email explaining that later. Um, Tara, Courtney, I mean, everyone was so great. Um, and I, I just, I'm proud to know you at this point in time. I really am because I wouldn't have been brave enough as, in a, as a person your age and, and you are. And, and I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm just really tickled. So thank you. Awesome, thank you. Um, I have to ask a question because I see a few of you. Are some of you in quarantine? Because it looks like, uh, no, do I have anyone who's in quarantine? Oh, okay, because some of the backdrops, I was like, oh boy, which I would have applaud. That would have really um, been, um, you know, um, a, an applauded effort to be doing that from uh, quarantine. Um, so let me ask you, how do you all, because we have so many first year students um, here today. Olivia, I think, Olivia, are you our only senior here today? I'm graduating in December. So if you count okay. that as a senior, then yes. Okay, so let me ask, and anyone can chime in, how come more upperclassmen do not join or did not join the competition this year? And will some of you come back is what I wanna ask too. Can I put people, Jameson, will you come back? Yeah, sure thing. Oh, I'm definitely, I'm definitely coming back. It's definitely, it's definitely a fun experience and gets your nerves going. So uh, I'm definitely going to be back next year and, you know, hopefully continuously. So. Awesome. Um, let me ask Victoria, are you going to share with Jerry your speech? Yes, ma'am. I'll be telling them on Wednesday. I don't know if I could show them on YouTube in the dining room, but I'll try my best. Yep, because it will be on YouTube. And we're hopeful that um, our marketing department will give us an edited version that would show highlights of everybody. So uh, we're hopeful that that can be completed and then everybody would have access to that as well. Awesome. All right, well, let's just wait patiently. We've only got a few, a few more minutes. And I guess, oh, I will ask because I think um, Hannah was asking you, what made all of you, what was the motivating part that made you join the competition this year? Shane, why did you join? I would just say like the stigma behind uh, public speaking. I've always loved public speaking. I've always loved being able to like talk in front of people and just having the chance to do that now, especially a lot of first year students, it's nice seeing your peers and uh, being able to speak in front of them. I, I think it's really important that we continue to do this and, and do more of it to try to get rid of that that stigma of, of people being scared and afraid of talking in front of others. Cause I think it's a really important characteristic and trait that we need to kind of develop, especially in the workforce, but more importantly, just in general, so. That's awesome, thank you. And I love how you said that stigma. Um, and I think, and I hope all of you share this with your friends who don't go to Nichols, because to your point, I, I'm sure a lot of them will be shocked, right? They'll be like, you did what? And it, and it, and there is this kind of um, stigma attached to it. So um, I'm glad that at Nichols, we can overcome that because uh, we do want to overcome it because it is such a strength and a skill. Anyone else? Why did you join? Haley, why did you join? Um, it's definitely outside my comfort zone. I cannot public speak at all. So I yes, had to push did. myself. <laughs> yes, you, you, you did just a great did job. It. You just did it. You did, <laughs> right, and you did an awesome job. So now you can public speak. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm glad. Thank you for sharing that. All right, I'm going to turn it back over to our Master of Ceremonies. I see our judges and Hannah are back, so I'm going to turn it back over to Hannah. Thank you so much, Professor Westerling. So our judges have finished up their deliberation, so now is the time that we've all been waiting for.
But before I announce our winner, I would just like to thank all of our contestants. You've all done a wonderful job and you should be so proud of the hard work that you've put into your speeches. So now for our winners. In third place, we have Tara Ostromecki with 36 points. Congratulations. Thank you. In second place, we have Madeline Sudan with 37 points. Right. And lastly, finally, the first place winner of the ninth annual Nichols College Elevator Speech Competition is Olivia Antonson with 39 points. Congratulations, Olivia. Thank you. This has been such an incredible event. Thank you all. Thank you to all of our participants for making today so great. So for Olivia, we have for you a big check, which I would happily hand to you through the screen if I could, but because I can't, I will find you on campus at some point so I can get this to you. So thank you so much, everyone, for your participation, to our audience for their support, to our judges for taking up the difficult job of choosing between such wonderful contestants, and of course, to Professor Westerling, Professor Beaupre, and Dan DeRoche for their dedication to this event. We can't wait to see you all next year for the 10th anniversary competition, but until then, stay healthy, stay strong, and stay proud. Bye, Bison. Nice job. Great work, everyone. Good job, everyone. If the winners could stay on.